Yes, a warm welcome to Pertex Stadium, the game of the round, arguably the game of the season so far. One versus two, Australia's two biggest cities about to engage with a third of the season gone, and both the Wanderers and the Victory starting to assert their respective credentials. Well, this should be a very special night. As you've no doubt heard, the active fans make their return this evening. All available tickets were sold out today. So much for being scared to go. The only noise that should be of any alarm tonight is of the atmosphere. On a perfect evening in Parramatta, current temperatures 19 degrees with leaden skies overhead. On the pitch, the Wanderers in their best run of form since their debut year in the A-League. Six straight wins and the goals are flowing like winter rain. Two or more in each of their last five. Tonight, they look to become just the fourth team in the competition's history to go seven in a row. Victory lost their footing on a cabbage patch of a pitch in Auckland last week, ending their own four-game winning streak. But a win tonight will restore them to the top, and crucially, they have a game in hand, which they play on Wednesday. That match in Perth, the second of three, inside a huge seven days for Kevin Muscat's team, culminating in the Melbourne derby. So 2015, a year of contrast for these two. Marvellous for Melbourne with their three trophies. Worrying for Wanderers after their Annus Maravillis of 2014. But they're back, so are the fans. This set to be one of those nights that sets the A-League apart. Well, let's remind you of the two-team lineups. Started with the Wanderers, and the good news for Tony Popovich is that Mark Bridge has shaken off a hamstring niggle that had him on light duties in training for the best part of this week. He starts in an unchanged lineup, still no Federico Pio Vaccari, though the Italian is now back in full training. Mitch Nichols has four goals in his last five matches. Bridge has scored in each of his last three. Victoria also unchanged. This team virtually picks itself in the absence of regular captain Carl Valeri, who's suffering the after effects of a virus that is affecting his balance. We wish him a speedy recovery. So Lee Broxham continues as captain. Up front, the awesome foursome, Barbarossa, Finkler, Kalfala and Barisha, who between them have scored 12 of Victory's 14 goals so far. Brendan Santalab has been the lucky charm off the bench for the Wanderers. He's come on five times this year, and the Wanderers have won all five. Giancarlo Galafoco still awaiting his debut for the victory. He's on the bench. Tony Popovich and Kevin Muscat, two Warriors who represented Australia on 104 occasions between them, sharing the pitch on 28 occasions. Now they represent the next generation of Australian coaches. And already they have five major trophies under their belt collectively. Match referee Sean Evans, probably the most high profile appointment of his 28 game early career. Although he did once take charge of a Beijing Guan Guangzhou Evergrande encounter in China in front of 46,000 at the Workers' Stadium. Alison Flynn, James Testoriero, and Chris Griffiths Jones as fourth official make up our law enforcement quartet. Two old friends up against each other tonight. Dario Vidicic, whose dad, Rado, is Melbourne Victory's assistant coach, encouraged a teammate to come to try and try his luck in Australia while playing in Germany for Armenia Bielefeld some years ago. His name? Bessar Barisha. And, of course, you know the rest. So, victory all in white tonight. The snow colour clash this evening and there should be great noise from the stands one versus two the Wanderers with a chance to extend their lead at the top victory looking to replace them and go back to the position they perhaps feel is rightfully theirs having won three trophies in this calendar year So off we go, Melbourne victory on the attack, and one of the most anticipated clashes of the season. And there's the first infringement already, a tough one to pick, Andy Harper. You can put your neck on the line for us. Uh, thanks very much, Simon, great to be here, what an occasion. 
the ground a pitcher. Slight signs of some wear and tear on what has been to this point a magnificent playing surface. Again, if I can reiterate how magnificent to see the clear white markings of a football pitch. Unambiguous. Fantastic weather. Two great teams. Let's get it on. Nice little step forward by Dimas, who gets it back. Now Andreu looking to drive forward for the Wanderers. Their first real foray into victory territory. It's with Castellin. Oh, clever. Romeo Castellin across the face. And Bridge just stuck out a boot and didn't get the best contact. And he is in fine fettle at the moment. You might have expected better. <laughs> we certainly did. Castellan is just blistering. He kills two with beautiful intuition. And no small dose of acceleration. And Mark Bridge completely muffed it. Finkler again from a similar sort of position. Castellan couldn't control it. Nichols might steal it and thread it through for Bridge, who's away here. Mark Bridge, can he find the finish this time? Bridge just run away from him. And Vukovic out to narrow the angle as well. But just an inadvertent touch. Well, that's two really good sights Mark Bridge has had of the victory goal. Brilliant by Mitch Nichols. Held his nerve in winning the challenge and then just the perfect release to Mark Bridge. Never completely looked comfortable. And it was that stuttering touch which sealed the deal in victory's favour. And speaking about pre-existing relationships, what about Bridge bearing down on Vukovic? Two great mates from their youth in the western suburbs of Sydney. Thought I was back in the 2008 grand final there for a moment. Dimas. Bridge. Layoff for Nichols. Vidasic. Not too many bodies in the box. I'll recycle it through Dimas. Vidasic. Jamison. All very tight in there, but the Wanderers have done really well to retain the ball. And Vidasic with a very smart turn. And gets the corner off Jason Guerrier. Expert work. Well, so tight on the far touchline, but again, just the focus, the mentality, the poise, the composure. Just to hold your feet in those tight areas until you can work an angle and find some space. Jamison was outstanding. And then Vidasic did brilliantly in the box. Great passage of play from the Wanderers. First corner of this top of the table clash. Dimas angles it towards Jamison. Didn't quite sit for him on his favoured left foot. Back out it pops for Nichols. Nichols trying to float it towards that back stick. He's in the mid Perfect night here in Parramatta. Our aerial view shows the pristine weather and no doubt capturing some of the great atmosphere inside the ground as well. Finkler's corner, driven across. Oh, and Redmayne spilled it. And it might drop here for Georgievski. It's got in, has it? Off the Russian, no. Off the frame of the goal, so close. And then Finkler has a real lash at it and makes something of a hash of it. But that was a catalogue of errors from Western Sydney Wanderers. He could see it in the corner in the first place and then the goalkeeper. And how close was Barisha? That right. close. Well, nervous for Andrew Redmayne. Nearly egg on his face. Instinctive from Georgeski to turn and hook the ball. And anticipating, as always, was Bessar Barisha. Jamison goes inside this time. Cute ball for Barisha and Barbarousas on the follow-up. And victory with that close again. Delightful approach play involving Barbarousas. And then Barisha, and it so nearly resulted in a goal. Georgievski, Mahazi. And that took a deflection. That's going to be a corner. Oh, this is beautiful from Barbarossas. Jamison in the end couldn't keep up with him, and it's a crucial touch from Andrew Redmayne. But one on one on the far touchline, Mahazi fed Barbarossas. His first instinct was to utilize that opportunity, and he left Jamison for dead.
Set up again by Gary Orr, and uh, Mahazi has to be careful, and the Wanderers have pinched it. Castellin, and the counter is on here. Nichols needs to go first time, wasn't the best weight on the release, but the Wanderers on the attack through Bridge. And again, he sends Neville a little bit wider than he wanted. Neville's cross, though. And perhaps wanted or might have had the corner, but the whistle has gone in favour of victory, and a promising move. Ends in disappointment. That's One end of the park to the other. Neville looking to do something special with this. Nichols to his right, might not need it. Good solid challenge by Del Pierre, and then Nichols sliding in to win it back. Great determination shown by the Wanderers. Vidicic. Now Jamison promise here for the Wanderers. Castellan in space in the penalty area. Romeo Castellan. And it's off the legs of Danny Vukovic and behind. Great work, Vukovic. Perhaps didn't look spectacular. Jamison raiding again. Castellan, difficult one to control, but he's been so good at this half. You've noticed how the players didn't close in on him, lest they get beaten pointless. He still managed to squeeze the shot away, and Vukovic was great. The Wanderers are the best second half team in the Hyundai A League. Yet to concede a goal at home in the second half of matches all season. And Castellan has stolen the ball again. Slide it in, here's a chance. Mark Bridge, can he dig it out from between his feet? Back for Castellin. And Victory got bodies in the way at the expense of a corner. Well, he's got sticky tape or glue or tar or something. Mark Bridge, he just couldn't get the ball out. What about the speed, again, of Castellin? Finds Bridge, he just can't get it set. And then Castellin, for some reason, decides to go through a lot of traffic. He had Vitasic free on the back post. Top of Stanley. Jamison turns away from Barbarousas. And he ignores Vinicic. What a run this is by Jamison. Oh, and the cross was just a little bit heavy for Bridge. And Bozanic first to the loose ball. What a run by the fullback. Now, of course, he's out of position. It's routine in the end for Andrew Redmayne. Who gets the ball released immediately again. You just cannot draw breath here in Parramatta. Neville steers it in behind the fullback, Castellin. Romeo Castellin, and there's Bridge, and there is the goal. Mark Bridge scores for the fourth game in a row, and Parramatta erupts the Wanderers lead. Well, at least in part, Simon, let's put this goal down to positivity of approach. In the end, it was brilliant execution. The release pass for Castellan, who's been on fire. Great work, Scotty Neville. Too much speed, Castellan, and Bridge finally gets one. But put it down to the mentality of the Wanderers and victory, the way they've set tonight. Bozanic shoots, Redmayne gathers and immediately releases. The Wanderers were away, victory couldn't recover, and Mark Bridge gives the home team the lead. Quite brilliant A-League football here at Parramatta. Well, the only thing this game had been missing was a goal. That's now been rectified. And the big question now, what do the champions have in response? Can they deal with this Wanderers onslaught? Can they deal with the noise? They've shown great resilience in the past. Here they come again, top of Stanley's ball over the top. Castellin, good defending by Del Pierre, but it will be a wondrous corner. And what about that combination again? Castellin to Bridge, the same combination that saw them score the first goal against the Raw last week. Oh, fantastic, but I haven't heard Parramatta Stadium this loud ever. They're back with a vengeance. This, ladies and gentlemen, is football. Then it shoots, Redmayne saves and releases Neville, who releases Castellan. It's Groundhog Day. He's quicker than a groundhog, that's for sure. Here is Castellan, chested down by Vidicic, laid off for Neville. Castellan again. Georgeska ran and goes down inside the box, more big appeals for a penalty. Again, nothing doing. I think on that occasion, no, probably I, rightly so. Yeah, I didn't see a penalty on that one. 
the uh, replay might be instructive. He's just in fine. No, he's reached in to get the ball, Kalfala. It's a tight one, but I think the ref got it right. Kids love it too. Jamison, flat a delivery this time. Pops out for Bridge. Oh, off the crossbar. So close to a second. It was Andreu. It was magnificent. It was Andreu, you're right. It was magnificent. He has such beautiful technique. And he brings it down on his chest, going backwards. And, well, he couldn't have done any more, really. Lukovic would have had it covered otherwise. Georgievski. Now, Barisha inside the penalty here. That normally spells trouble. And Connor Payne is as close as victory have come in this second half. And it did take a touch, did it? Yep. Referee Sean Evans great says save. that's a great save by Andrew Redmay. Good spot. Everybody was setting themselves up for the goal kick. We just had that one nervous moment in the first half, if you recall, Simon. If that cross didn't take it, there's the hospital ward to the, the Wanderers. Affected area. They've got the long trip to Perth next week, the Wanderers. Castle it. Brilliant to get around Georgievski. Goes for goal! And he scored! Romero Kasselin! And that might just seal the deal for Western Sydney. Straight through Danny Vukovic. And it's 2-0. And the Dutchman has a goal at last. Well, I don't think... There's a more popular person to have scored a goal, given how close he's come. It's been a wretched run of no goals for Romeo Castellan when he's offered so much else. But he's put one on tonight, and he's got rid of Georgeshi again. Just superb. And then the power in those thighs lets rip. It's a friendly angle for the goalkeeper, it should be said, and Vukovic won't be completely satisfied with the job he's done on this one. Not by a long shot. But Romeo Castellan will take it. He's been banging away for weeks, and finally he's opened the door. Well, it's a sloppy one to concede, as you point out, Andy, from victory's perspective. And Romeo Castellan won't care. Just his third goal in the A-League. And now victory. The champions, the treble winners in 2015, have got a mountain listen, to climb. Just listen to this. Honestly, they wouldn't be able to build a stadium big enough in Parramatta. If the way the Wanderers are and the way they will keep growing and the way the league will keep growing. Well, the active fans return tonight and the Wanderers have put on a show for them as the Poznan goes around the stadium to signal that they're under 10 minutes left. Broxham. Have victory got anything left? They've had their chances tonight. Georgievski. Now Connor Payne in behind. Oh, it needed a better cross than that. What can Georgievski find? Payne again. That's the goalkeepers. Well, it's been a withering game of football. The breaks, if there have been any, have been earned by the Wanderers to get the two goals. Victory have created plenty of menace themselves. But that last crossing situation. Connor Payne was a really poor execution. The chance that came to do something. And a crowd of over 17,000 here tonight. One of the Wanderers' biggest of all time, certainly the biggest this season. And that's the right response to those that would rubbish not only their club, but this game. What a night it's been in Parramatta. Almost the entire stadium on its feet. But even the members are losing it. 
when I say members, you know, the A category members, the people who are a little more reserved normally, shall we say. Channeling their inner suburban terrorist hearts. victory suffer back-to-back -back losses for the first time since January 2014. A tough night for Kevin Muscat, he's gracious enough to shake the hand and say well played to Tony Popovich, whose team were magnificent tonight. Victory certainly played their part, but goals in the second half for Mark Bridge, 4-4 four four for him now, and then Romeo Castellin sealing the deal for Western Sydney. The Wanderers moving four points clear at the top and they're now well on track perhaps for a second premiership in four seasons. It finished at Pertec Stadium. Western Sydney Wanderers 2, Melbourne victory nil. Let's join Dean Heffernan for some reaction. Thanks for that, guys. I have Romeo Castellan here with me, the Powerade Ion man of the match. Romeo, you look like you really enjoyed yourself out there tonight. Yes, it was uh, great to be on the pitch today and uh, we got a great win today again, so uh, unbelievable crowd, so we're all happy. And it must be great to have the fans back here today and to score a goal in front of them? Of course, I mean, uh, look at the atmosphere today, you know, it's amazing. We, without the fans, you, you don't have football, so uh, I'm happy they're here and uh, happy to score a goal when they're here, so we're all happy today. And what's been the secret of the success? You know, you were towards the bottom of the table last year and now that's seven wins in a row for the Wanderers. I think from the start we, we believe in the, in the structure and the way we move the ball and, uh, and we, we always create chances so I think it's a very team performance and uh, every day we work on it on training so uh, we keep improving every week. Congratulations Romeo, enjoy the win. Thanks, thanks a lot. Superb, sums up a few things out of that match, the performance of that man right there, Romeo Castellan, the atmosphere at Pertec Stadium, but indeed the performance as a whole of the Western Sydney Wanderers, seven in a row, as Simon mentioned, just the fourth team to do so, the threshold is six, if you usually win six in a row, and any team to have won six in a row in the history of the A-League, they win the Premier's plate. Some sure signs here, Mark Bosnich and Mark Rudin, that the Wanderers are on the way to doing just that for, this, for another time. Well, I asked Mark Rudin before the game, uh, whoever won tonight, have they got the right to basically feel as though they're favourites to win the Premier's plate? He answered in the affirmative, and I believe um, he's exactly right. The Wanderers are outstanding this evening. Melbourne Victory played their part too. Mm. Uh, had their chances, especially in the first half. And getting that all-important first goal uh, obviously was vital, but second half, I thought the Wanderers run all over him. That man there... Romeo Castellan, he's been outstanding all season, and tonight we saw the finished product as well. Fantastic night, great football, great atmosphere. Coach of the Western Sydney Wanderers, Tony Popovich, with his former player, now with us at Fox Sports, Dean Heffernan. Well, Tony, that's seven wins in a row now, but the last two wins have been against top teams in a competition. You must be happy with that. Yeah, we're delighted. Um, you know, just walking off the field, so it's... Uh, it will take time to reflect on that, but you know, a fantastic crowd. Uh, we send them home happy and uh, you know, it, was a, it was a great three points. And it was a real tight game and there was key moments in that game like the penalty shout early in the second half. How did you see that? Um, yeah, to be honest, I can't really recall it uh, uh, clearly at the moment. Um, yeah, overall, I think we had some fantastic opportunities early in the game, the first 10 minutes. Uh, against victory, you're always on edge uh, with, the, with the quality that they have in the front third. Uh, it never feel like it's quite safe, uh, but I think tonight we deserve the points. And last week we were talking about Mark Bridge, Mick, Mitch Nichols the week before, and this week it's Romeo Castle and you've got an abundance of players playing well. Yeah, it's great to see Romeo score. Um, uh, that's what he deserved. He deserved that. He's had so many opportunities to score. Uh, he's setting up opportunities. Uh, he did fantastically well for the first goal, so uh, that caps off a great night for him. And just an update on Dario Vitasic and Mark Bridge? Uh, look, you know, we'll have to see, uh, hope, hoping that uh, there's nothing serious there, but uh, I'm sure uh, the medical staff will do their best to have him right next week. 
Uh, congratulations on the win. Thank you.